Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. Welcome everybody back. Another episode of The Apartment Guys coming at you. And I'm joined by a special guest today, Mr. Damian Lupo. And uh, Damian is a professional real estate investor and a serial entrepreneur, which I've used to describe myself a few times in my life. Um, you've started 50 plus companies, dude. That's amazing. And uh, you've written 11 books, a four-time college dropout who actually got thrown out of one of the schools for opening a bookstore in his dorm room, putting the official store into bankruptcy. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Damon became a multimillionaire by the age of 25 and then lost his $20 million empire by the age of 30. And after what would have been a crushing defeat for many, Damien built his, rebuilt his entire fortune I uh, totally reinvented himself in his business and today lives inside a mission to free a million people from financial bondage. What an awesome mission that is. You bought your first rental house with a visa, which snow, snowballed into uh, owning 150 rental houses in seven states in less than five years. Uh, eventually, Damien founded T Total Control Financial in 2010 to help people achieve financial freedom. His company focuses on qualified retirement plans or QRPs, which are much more flexible than IRAs or 401ks. The main goal of Damien's company is to take money out of Wall Street and to put it into Main Street's hands. So that's that's an awesome mission. And uh, by the way, you're also a fifth degree black belt. Is that correct still? Or, or are you now like even like more advanced than that? <laughs> no, I, I, you know, it's funny. I, I think so. In, I have a friend of mine that I've trained with that's a 10th degree black belt. And it, it's almost a ceremony of, of how much scar tissue you have, you have when you get these different belts. <laughs> it's not like you know a new technique or something. Maybe you, you invent a new technique or something. But a lot of the, a lot of the stuff, it's it, like whether somebody says I'm a black belt or a fifth degree black belt doesn't really make a difference to me. All black belt means is that you've decided to do enough training to where you're really a student. And the different levels, really past second degree or maybe past third degree, it's more of a teaching space. And that's mm -hmm. that, that's the essence of most things. You get to a higher level and then you, you end up teaching it because you can know a lot, but it doesn't really do you any good if you're not teaching. It's And when I said do you, doing you, it's, it's your spirit. Mm -hmm. when, when, if you're just holding all that in, you're consuming information, which the population on earth is really getting good at consuming things, which I think is one of the problems with what's happening right now. We've, we've lost the ability to give and connect. And there's almost this anxiety where people are trying to figure out how they get as much as they can before the bottom falls out of everything. So yeah. I, I, we, we all need more black belt teachers. We need people that are willing to go deeper into things and then to give the best of what they have to other people. That's how we save the world. I like it. Well, here's your intro. Like, you know, that's the first thing I had to say, I guess. That's perfect. Perfect. I love it. Um, so I, I actually really, I kind of want to start right with, with martial arts. Cause I am a newbie. I are not even a newbie. I'm, I, I have done a lot of yoga and that's it. And that's not a martial art. I know how has that shaped you and how is it in particularly like professionally, like in, in, in your business world? Um, what, what qualities has it kind of helped nurture in you and, and, how has it kind of helped you in, in different ways? One of the things, and this, this is probably something that you find whether you're playing football or whatever you're doing, but if you're if you're out there in a space where you get used to being hit or or kicked or punched or, or things and you stop reacting to it, it just becomes, it, it, the real world, like we've we've lost this because we've become, especially in America, we've, we've become a nation of snowflake zombies. And I mean, it's, it's really embarrassing if somebody, not even somebody hitting you, but they hurt you with, by hurting your feelings. And all of a sudden you, you need to tell on them. You just need to sue them. You need to Twitter bomb them, like whatever it is. And when you train in martial arts or something that physically is, is painful, emotionally it's painful. You know, I remember in the beginning, 
I, I got punched and, and my, my eyes started watering and I was like, wow, am I crying over being punched? Like, this is embarrassing, mm -hmm. but it was my body. It was just, it was a natural response. And, and what, one of the values there, and I've done a, a lot of yoga. In fact, Yokido is the martial art that I created and it's a blend of Aikido and yoga and Reiki. And mm -hmm. there's incredible value with yoga. In fact, you, you find a lot of, of guys, especially that do a lot of weightlifting and they don't have core strength. They have big legs, big arms, but they have no core. And then you see somebody that you look at and you're like, well, they don't look very strong. And then they're holding these poses because their core is strong and they're going to live a lot longer and a lot happier because they're not going to be all locked up. That's the same thing in life. Like they, I really feel like martial arts, yoga and life are the same. And you got to find ways to keep yourself fluid and, and, and mobile. We tend to get very rigid and we have, we have goals or fixations on visions. We want a certain house or a car or, or a spouse or a, you know, whatever it is. And if they're not a certain way, then it's not perfect. We go for all this perfection and all this success instead of this fulfillment. And yoga is, and martial arts training is all about the fulfilling journey. Mm -hmm. Most people don't understand that. They're just going for a target. I'm going to retire and I'm going to retire with $5 million. And so I'm going to spend 40 years doing something that's hell on earth to get to this point where nobody really cares that I've gotten retired. And now I'm scared I'm going to lose all my money. So we, there, there has to be a shift if you really want to understand freedom. It's about this journey. It's about building confidence. Confidence is, is the same as core strength. And you do it by doing it over and over and over again. So go, going straight into the, the money space, I see people that are saying, okay, here's my plan. I'm going to save money. I'm going to put it into a 401k or I'm going to hand it to a financial advisor. And in 30 or 40 years, I he heard Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey say that I'll be financially free. And, and no, you won't. You'll be in financial prison because you're not going to have any skills. You're not going to have any confidence. You're going to have two or $3 million if you're lucky. And you're going to be staring at it going, oh my God, I hope it doesn't go away. So the, the conventional wisdom that's out there is completely wrong. It's bass backwards. Like it's really, truly terrible advice. And unfortunately people are, are told and they believe by these financial advisors and wall street and custodians that you're just, you're too stupid. And I, I think they're stupid, but they're actually just, I, they're, they're like the matrix, they're predators. They're, they're feeding on the population and we've got to stand up and take, you know, take a stand, push back and say, no, it's my money. It's my life. It's, you know, it's my responsibility. And that's how you become free is by owning it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. It's well said. And you could, you could say that about, so many th aspects of life, whether it's your physical health or, or, uh, your spiritual health or, or your financial health, whatever that is, is you, you have to own it. You have to have be a hundred percent responsible and a hundred percent in the driver's seat of creating that reality, that level, you know, what some people call a level 10 life. I think Hal Elrod uses that terminology in all aspects of your life or in as many of them as, as possible. And, uh, you, you know, I think these practices, yoga, martial arts, um, you know, the, all, all of the, all of the different martial arts, uh, meditation, they're, they're all, uh, activities that, that create a sense of, um, I think almost a sense of like inner mastery, if you will. Um, at least that's kind of been my experience, uh, over the years. And it's, it's been a journey to kind of to get to that point and by mastery, I don't necessarily mean like I've got it all figured out, but like there, I'm no longer like at the whim of my kind of that monkey mind that jumps around and calls the shots a lot, a lot of the time for a lot of us. Right. Like, and I'd say, you know, there's still a huge part of the time that I'm unconscious and in reactivity mode, but for the most part, I, I'm able to catch myself a little bit quicker and, and whatnot. Um, but, uh, I love that. And I, and I, I love what you, what you said too, about money and, and like really owning your reality, owning, owning your experience there. So, um, all right. So talk first of all, a little bit about, um, well, I guess let's just jump right into, into, uh, to why, uh, QRP EQ QRP and, um, you know, kind of what is it obviously, and let's just jump right into that stuff. Uh, I'm very yeah. interested. So EQRP is the Enhanced Qualified Retirement Plan. What is it? It's mm -hmm. it's a way for you to control your retirement money and, and be able to invest in things outside of Wall Street. It's it's a tool that's available for people, whether you're by yourself, you're you're an employee, you have employees, you've got 50 employees or five. It, it allows you to take control and invest in real estate, Bitcoin, 
gold, silver, private notes, and do it in a tax efficient way, meaning you can not pay taxes forever. You can get tax deductions. You can roll over old IRAs and 401ks into this account and then use it however you want. No tax, no penalty. And, and you can, one of the greatest things, and, and it actually got Congress all wound up last year in 2021, was finding out that Peter Thiel had a $5 billion Roth account. And, and they said, how is that possible? Well, it's because Peter's a smart F and guy. Like he just, mm-hmm. he knows how to do it. And it wasn't because he went and invested in a freaking S and P, you know, or time dated, time stamped, whatever these goofy things are. One of these funds, he went out there and did things privately. And that that opportunity is available to people if they're active. But most people want to be totally passive, and they go, "Well, I just want to have the the cash flow. I just want to have the returns. I don't want to have to do any work." You know, if if that's your philosophy on life, see how long it lasts. If you want to have passive sex with your spouse, spouse is going to leave. They're not going to they're not going to want to take a ride. They're going to be like, "I'm out of here. This is terrible." So I think we really have to decide how active we're going to be. And if we want to have freedom, we have to be active. And EQRP is meant for people that are in, interested in being active, choosing investments. And and not only that, but I mean, you can you can store a crap load of money. I mean, up to hundreds of thousands of dollars per year for a family. I mean, easily at 60000 plus per person. And you can you can turn your kids into little child, into little tax deductions and create Roth accounts for them, the Roth EQRP. There's so many cool things about this and people go, well, how come I haven't heard about it? If it's so cool, trust me, thousands of your of people around you have, and there's more than a billion dollars under advisement right now in these accounts. And it's, but that a billion dollars compared to $40 trillion, which is how much is in all these accounts mm-hmm. is a blip. It's not even a pimple on a rhinoceros, but it's so yeah. small. Yeah. So that's why you haven't heard about it. The, the mass majority of money is in wall street brokerage accounts and traditional 401ks, which is really it's it's monetary and retirement jail right and the and the best you can hope for is to keep pace i mean realistically keep pace with the market right like if you're in a market fund or so, something that's tied to 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 how the overall market's doing like and history shows what six percent seven percent eight percent if you're doing pretty well like uh in the stock market uh, not to mention some fair amount of volatility, and then you throw inflation in there, and what is you know what are you really getting in the way of, re- of a return, right? Like, and that's the problem with with looking at returns and and these these ideas that an eight percent over a long period it's all bullshit. It's it's truly mm-hmm. it's it's lies and manipulation by a system that wants to feed on you. There's a guy that, by the name of John Bogle recently passed away, the founder of Vanguard. Very, very successful, very smart. Wall Street started getting really pissed off at this guy because he was sharing the truth. He goes, there's something wrong with the system when the system consumes 80% of the profits and you as the investor take on all the risk. So think about that. You, the investor, put up the money, put it in the stock market, and you end up with 20%. After fees and taxes, you end up with 20%, but you took on all the risk. That's the system it's meant to feed on you. So basically all the money goes to the power structure, the government and the Wall Street goons. And, and that's... I mean, that's a huge problem. And people just yeah. think, well, I'm going to go get my 8%. Well, crap, look at inflation. Inflation is not 7%. I mean, the government right. said 7 now. It's right. truly 15 to 25. Look at how, how much did your Christmas tree cost in right. 2021? It, it was a lot more than 2020. I had friends that said it was literally, literally double. That is not 7%. So if you think you're going to be good because the stock market gave you 22% and, and inflation is more than that, I mean, you're going backwards. So you have to be willing to go active or you're going to get clobbered by these freaks in the, in the Federal Reserve and Congress. They're they're screwing you over and stealing from you. You got to be smarter. You got to be active. Mm-hmm. All right. So teach us how to do that. What's what's give us the nuts and bolts uh, of, of this, uh, how, how this works and how to, how to make it happen. I'll give you I'll give, I'll give you the core that the secret is it's it's owning everything about your results your life your 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 life is your own damn fault that's it that's Larry Winget's book it's one of his books and I love it I love that guy he's, he's one of my bald brothers I mean it's the the key is it it doesn't even matter so much the tool the tool can be a lot of things people can do you know they can go and, and take some cash and go buy an option on a on a piece of property and flip it and become a multimillionaire overnight like there's that option retirement accounts it's really about self responsibility. The EQRP is just, the, it's the best tool in the country for retirement accounts. I think it's the best tool because you can actually invest tax-free for life to where you're growing and spending your money without tax. It's the only one of its kind that works like that. There is nothing else that allows you to do it. Not life insurance, not brokerage accounts, not real estate by its own. Like this is the one place. 
And it's, you know, they're under attack because Congress says, well, that's just not fair. But mm -hmm. what's, what's the secret? You got to get smarter. And you got not smarter like school. Like school is a terrible, terrible place to get smarter because it's all taught by people that are broke. Like, why would you want to learn anything about money with a bunch of people that are, don't have any? Like, that's a stupid, that's like learning how to cut somebody's brain open in medical school. And all they do is, you know, they're, they're teaching, they're, they're actually, they're skilled in making, a, you know, crochet. And you're like, well, why would I learn from somebody like that? Well, you know what? They, they needed to fill the spot. And that's what people are doing. They're teaching based on not having the experience. And it's, so how do you do this? Where do you start? You find people that, that are balder, grayer, that have scar tissue, that have gone through it, and you hire them. You don't go say, hey, can I have all your time for free? You go over there and you say, I want some time and I will trade you. I will give you real dollars that I had to go sweat and bleed for And I, because I'm serious. And you find the most qualified people you can. And if you think that, oh, that's too much money, then you're a loser because you're not committed. And I say that seriously. It doesn't matter how much you pay a mentor because the only reason that you don't think it's worth it is one, they're totally not qualified, which is a possibility. Or two, if they are, you're just not committed enough because I don't care if you're spending every dollar you have and it's 50 grand and that's it. If you go to the right person and you do what they say and you actually are committed, you're going to end up making 10x that in the next year. Right. But people are committed. That's the problem. It's not the mentor's problem. It's not this tool. It's not the asset. It's you. And when you own that, all of a sudden you can change it. Yeah. 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 Cool. How's it work? How's the plan work? How do you set it up? How do you get started in it and whatnot? So the plan, if you, if you want to have a, a plan, we're talking specifically about the EQRP. If you want, if you want to have a plan, most of us have some type of orphan IRA or 401k. We can move these things into a place, into an EQRP. The EQRP company, which is what, that's my company, we set this up and then we coach people and guide you along the path. So you roll this money over and then, you know what, go make must money, go, go hustle, go, go earn some money and put it in there. You can put up to 60,000 plus into this plan a year. Wow. And then you start growing that thing tax-free forever. So, so it's really is not, it, not really complicated. Sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, is it, is it kind of, is it like a Roth in that way? In, in that you put it in, are you, are you paying taxes on it before you put it in and then never paying taxes again kind of thing? So it's, it's really a choice. You can pay taxes now. You can pay taxes later. You can pay taxes never. And then okay. you go, wait a second. How do I pay taxes? Never I like that choice. Choice C sounds much better. Yeah. So the way you do it is you, you put money into a retirement account, you get the tax deduction. And then when you, when you convert it to Roth, you do it when you have a, in a year where you have some, some phantom losses, I'll give you an example. You go buy a piece of real estate in 2022 and you happen to be a real estate professional. Okay, cool. So you get some depreciation. That's a phantom loss. It's not a yeah. real loss. It, 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 it's a loss against your income. Well, if you convert money inside of a, an EQRP from pre-tax, which is you haven't paid tax to Roth, normally that would be added to your income. Well, if you have a phantom loss, it can offset the other income that you made. So literally you can convert it, not pay taxes. Now it's Roth money, which means you can grow it for life for free. And then you take it out for free, no tax. So there's ways to literally not pay taxes ever again. People that pay taxes are morons because you're not paying attention to the code. You're not, you're, you're over there saying, well, I guess I have to pay taxes. You're lazy. Mm -hmm. and, and if, you know, if you go, well, I, Hey, you've hurt my feelings too bad. You know what? You should not be paying taxes into a system that's going to create bombs and social programs. Like mm -hmm. I don't fundamentally agree with that system. So you can do better. I know you're going to do better than the government's going to do with your money. So why don't you keep it and give it to your community? That's what I think should be happening. And there's a way to do it right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. So you, you get it in there and you, you grow it and you can, and you convert it strategically at a point in time when it makes the most sense to do that. Uh, and you, you touched for a second on bonus depreciation now cost segregation, where you can take a, a, a big, big, you know, in the, in the relative scheme of things, a big loss against, uh, your, income from uh from property due to bonus depreciation that we have in place at this point and and uh yeah it's it's super exciting is it seems pretty simple um and like it seems like it should be harder to understand than than you've made it <laughs> if that makes sense that's it's the entire nature of, of wall street <laughs> <laughs> try to make things so overly complicated that you're you're sitting there going, I have no idea how this works. I better just let you have control of it. This is simple. If you can write a check, if you can do basic addition, you can run a an EQRP. So you have a team that does the compliance. We do the compliance and we set things up. And your job is to be an investor. We're not going to invest for you. You got to invest. 
So if you go, oh my God, I can't do that. Well, then this is the wrong thing for you. But if you think that that you're, you're here's the deal. Ask yourself, who's going to care about your money more than you? And if you go, <laughs> nobody, then this is a good idea to look at. Because ultimately, if you hand your money to somebody, they don't care if it goes away. What difference is it going to make? If you're paying somebody 2% a year and they've got $50,000 of your money, they're making $1,000 a year. If it goes away, $1,000 isn't going to matter to them. 50000 matters to you. So yeah. who's going to care about that 50000 more? You or them? You will. Yeah. Well put. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So I'm pretty much sold. So I've got full disclosure to the listeners. I'm looking right now at uh, two of Damien's books on my bookshelf, uh, the QRP book and the QRP for syndicators book. So I now have a homework assignment for myself, which is to go back and read those again. And what are the downsides? Are I mean, uh, most common questions you get are like, what are the downsides and why don't aren't more people doing this? Why don't I know about this already? Right. Well, I mean, the downsides are you're going to be in control. If you don't do anything, nothing happens. We've had clients from time to time that will come in and get excited and then they don't do anything. And then two years later, their money's sitting in a checking account. And so, I mean, that's great if the stock market has gone cr and crashed and you were, you were going to be in it, but it, it doesn't do you any good if you're not going to do anything. So yeah. that's, that's the downside. Uh, so, I mean, really, truly, if you're, if you're going to participate in your financial life, which everyone should, because again, you're not going to find anybody that cares more about it than you do, then, then this is a good fit. Why don't you know about it? Because Wall Street doesn't want you to know about how you get control of your money. Are you kidding me? Yeah. The $40 trillion that they're making billions and billions of dollars off of stealing and, and, and cheating, they don't want you to know how you can take your money out of their system. And when you try to do it, they'll tell you you're too stupid and you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. The system is so, it's so geared to protect the advisors and the Wall Street machine and the custodians. It's not meant for people. It's literally meant to consume the people and all of their efforts. That's, I mean, unfortunately, you have to get that. If you don't get that, if you think Wall Street's on your side, if you think, oh, that commercial about Fidelity or Schwab, it's really cute. And they really like me and they want me to be successful and, and rich. No, they don't give two craps about that. What they care about is getting as many fees from you as possible. What you got to do is find people in community banks, places, financial institutions, advisors that are in alignment with you that you share core values with. That's what everybody should be doing, not going to freaking Chase Bank or one of these other criminal operations. <laughs> yeah. Tell us how you really feel, Damien. That's awesome. I love it. Call them out. Um, so and, and are there any limitations as to what you can invest in? There are a few things that you can't invest in. The IRS doesn't really say you can invest in X. What they say is you can't invest in collectibles. You can't invest in something you're going to get current benefit from, like a lake house. You can't go invest in a lake house that you're going to use for the summer. You can't invest in your with your kids, and you can't invest with your parents. Beyond that, you can invest with brothers and sisters. You can invest in our apartments and Bitcoin, gold and silver. You can do things that, like, one of the great things is you can invest in leveraged real estate and you don't get taxed. If you use an IRA, you get taxed. Like you literally get hammered 37% tax on a majority of your profits. That's only an IRA, any type of IRA, deferred or Roth. But if it's an EQRP, it's exempt. So it's it's really wide open. Whatever, you, if you want to invest in you know, banana trees in Panama, uh, presuming that there are banana trees in Panama, whatever you want to invest in, you've got options to do it. You want to do private equity, you want to do startups, you want to, I mean, there's, it's like limitless. And yet people are like, well, wait a second. What about X? Great. Go do it. It's very wide open. And it's, it, it allows you to really go into a space that makes sense to you. You're not stuck with this, the stock market, which for, for most people, unfortunately, it's the default and they never think about it beyond, oh, well, I guess I have money in the, in the stock market. Hope it goes up today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, right, no doubt. Um, okay. So, you know, one of the things that we run into as syndicators uh, is people that have a, a property they're selling and they want a 1030 want it into something else right and as syndicators that's really difficult to do it presents um all kinds of title issues and you, you know you have to do a tenants in common situation typically and uh it, it's just hard to do a 1031 with an apartment syndication this seems to be a probably a pretty dang good solution to me uh to somebody that's in that situation in that they the instead of flipping into a 1031 property they could they could get into a, an apartment syndication where they yeah they're gonna maybe be paying capital gains on that on that initial 
hit right but from there on out it's tax-free right well with the retirement accounts i mean they're they're far superior to 1031s because you can move into things move out of them and you don't have to worry about trying to time something not to not pay taxes because there yeah. are no taxes 1031s are very limited in that if if you're in a syndication unless the whole syndication is going to move over to the next property it's not going to happen it's just not set up that way so with a retirement account doesn't matter what the syndication does you can do your own thing and you can also move between asset classes 1031s do not allow you they don't allow you to go from an apartment to gold to bitcoin like you have a retirement account does so right, there's right. all these different advantages the flexibility and not having to have recapture and and so i you, you know a lot of things I, I remember early on i didn't know what qualified plans were or iras and all i knew was 1031s because that's what was taught at the seminar back in the in the late 90s i was like okay well that must be the thing to do and it, it was it was a great tool but now it's kind of a dumb tool because you're just kicking the can down and and the great thing about retirement accounts is you're 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 basically blowing up the can there is no more can when you go into a Roth state, it's zero tax. So people, I, you know, I hear people and one of, one of my old friends, very popular podcaster, and we've taught together in numerous places, Robert Kiyosaki loves the idea of real estate because you never pay taxes. That's not, that's not true because if you sell something and you don't replace it, you're going to pay taxes. Like you've got to have an event that offsets it. Whereas you can sell something in a retirement account. It's the only thing that I'm aware of where you can sell something and not pay taxes at all and you're not you're not just deferring the taxes right you're not kicking the can down the road like you are with a 1031 no. yeah totally different environment and that's I, I think people miss that they go well i can just do it outside and i can spend the money you can spend the money inside of a retirement account too and i don't care how old you are you can do it there are ways to do it without penalties you can do it without taxes this is where you have to have higher level people one of the problems i have tate is there's a lot of fintechs that are out there that are trying to become a really cool app really cool software well you know what all the information is already out there it's not like we don't, we can't get access to it. It's called Google or, or DuckDuckGo. Like you can get all the information. The problem is we're drowning in information. We're starving for wisdom. We don't have people and teams that can decipher and, and disseminate the stuff. And that's the value of, of a company. The EQRP company, what we do is make sure that people know what they need to know. And we, we boil stuff down. And, and that's, I mean, that's, you could, are you going to do sur surgery on your own brain? Or are you going to go to a surgeon that knows what they're doing? You can, all the information for cutting into your brain is on the internet. Are you going to do it to yourself? Are you going to have your friend do it? Hey, go Google and then cut my head. No, it's about having the right people giving you the right information. And, and that's, that's one of the things that we're seeing in a lot of spaces, but especially in this space, a lot of companies think it's all about just having some snappy software. I don't care about the software if you don't have the good humans. I mean, that's where that's, that's really what matters. You got to have good humans that are part of a team. Team is the ultimate part of any success and any fulfilling journey. Got to have a great team. Yeah. Yeah. And we talk about on this, on this show all the time, how this, this space in particular is very much a team sport. Um, I know that you you're around the syndication community a fair amount and, and nothing gets done in this space without partnerships and, and teams and people, you know, doing, doing what they're good at and partnering up with other people that are doing what they're good at and, and getting it done. So, um, so, to me, this is like something that everybody needs to know about, like the passive investors that I'm thinking of uh, in, in our in our world, um, like my passive investors in our projects. I would love for them to know about this this option. Um, what's talk to me about some resources? I'm sure YouTube has. I know that you you have lots of lots of interviews on YouTube and uh, presentations and whatnot, but you've written books on this where where do uh, where would a listener go to to learn more and and get engaged the the next step for everybody is to is to go to qrpbook.com get a copy of the book the one that you mentioned on your bookshelf if when you go the, you go to the site go to qrpbook.com and and get a copy of the book download the report it'll be on your phone in in about 2 minutes it'll take you 5 minutes to read it and once you're done you'll have the essence of what's in the book and then we'll FedEx you a copy of the book so your job is to get educated because if you're not using the right account, if you're using an IRA to go buy real estate, you're making a fundamental decision. You're going to lose a third of your money overall. Like this is a fact. If you're not using retirement accounts, you're missing out on being tax-free for life. So the reality is if you want to pay zero taxes and you don't want to get killed with some nuance in an IRA that you didn't even know about, you got to understand about this stuff. And you learn about that by reading the stuff that I, I took all the information and I did a lot of brain damage. 
to get to a place where you could read this stuff in, in less than 10 minutes. <laughs> So if you want to do that, or you know what, go to Google and brain damage yourself. Like you've got options. So yeah. I recommend go, go to qrpbook.com, get a copy of the book and, and start the education journey there and, and then see where it takes you. That's awesome. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Um, so any other thoughts for the listener who is in the apartment space and, and, or looking to get into the apartment space and is, it is scaling up, um, looking to grow a portfolio, larger scale. Um, I mean, I guess if I could go back in time and coach myself a little bit, I'd be talking to, uh, my, you know, my investors and in our, some of our initial meetings about this option, uh, for them so that they know about it going into it. Um, what else can you think of that might be helpful to our listeners? Well, here's an easy one that's not easy. It's, it's thinking bigger. So I, I was listening to Grant Cardone talk about this, and and he was he, he was talking with Robert and Kim Kiyosaki, and he said, "Look, if you're going to start, I would start with a 500 unit apartment or 200." Or he said he he's not a fan of starting with a house. Yeah. And I know Kim Kiyosaki talks a lot about starting with a house. I started with a house, mm -hmm. and I also did 150 houses in five years of houses. So I could have shifted into an apartment complex a lot sooner and had scale and had professional managers and everything. But my limiting factor was my brain mm -hmm. and it was my spirit. And, and so one of the reasons I didn't go to the bigger one is I just didn't know it. I didn't know. And it scared me. I could figure mm -hmm. out a house. I didn't know how to figure out an apartment. So how do you get past that? How do you think bigger and implement bigger and integrate it? That's easy. You know, you know what the secret is? You go find somebody that's doing it. You attach yourself to them like a freaking spore. Mm -hmm. And you, you, it, no matter what, you just hang out with them. And yeah, you're okay. like, well, how do I do that? Well, you show up and you start providing value. Don't go to somebody that's successful and rich and say, what can I do to help you? Yeah, like, that's the yeah. dumbest question ever. That, yeah. I'm too busy for somebody to come and try to get me to think about what you can do to help me. Right. I'm going to solve some of my problems and I'm going to become beholden to you and I'm going to want to have you come in. Yeah. And once yeah. that happens, you're going to learn. And not only are you going to learn, everything that I'm doing is going to become normalized. If I'm buying 500 unit apartments and that's what I do every day and you're around that, Everything that is required is going to become normal to you. So when you want to go out there and do it yourself, you're going to be like, oh, this is what you do. That's how you skip past this whole fear or I don't have any experience. You just go find somebody that's already doing it and you normalize yourself. It's the secret to getting anything done. Normalize your life around people that are already doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. And, and we, you know, we took the, uh, we took the path of, of, buying that person essentially. And in that we joined Corey Peterson's coaching mastermind uh, and learned all the ins and outs of everything from, you know, finding deals, vetting markets, LOIs, PSAs, uh, closing deals, managing, you know, getting all of the languaging, everything in place and essentially borrowing his like confidence and mojo and like his experience in getting these deals done. Um, and it just lifted us to the next level. It just put us in, a, in this zone where we were all of a sudden writing offers on 150 units and in, in San Antonio and 50 units in Albuquerque. And, and now we're in Columbus and Oklahoma. And it's kind of like whatever it takes, I think, to, to get, you know, to, to surround yourself with people that make it the norm, like you said, Damien, the, um, if I'm surrounded by people that are buying 500 unit apartment buildings, that's going to be a norm for me. And, and, uh, <laughs> that's a good thing. Right. So I agree. That's exactly yeah. it. And Corey's a great guy to listen to and, and to be mentored by for, I love that guy. Yeah, no, he, he absolutely was uh, a wonderful start for us. And, gave us a lot of confidence and, uh, was very generous, uh, with, with my team and myself and, uh, very grateful for him. Shout out to Corey, not the first shout out to Corey, but, uh, probably won't be the last one either. Cause he's a pretty key person, but, um, this has been fantastic, Damien. Um, how can, uh, is the website, the best place to reach you? QRPbook.com. Yeah. That's the best place to okay. start. Okay. What one of the things I'll leave everybody with is yeah. when you hear all sorts of information, you go to a seminar, you listen to a bunch of podcasts. Whenever you listen to a podcast or you read a book, grab one thing and do something with it. Even if there's 20 great ideas, you can parking lot them. You can come back and look at it again, but find one thing. 
I hear people that go, well, I read 57 books last year. And I'm like, yeah, but you haven't done anything with any of those books. I'd right. rather read two. And it's, and you could do 57. The problem is you just won't integrate and implement. And it takes, if you study a, a few key books like mm -hmm. Mastery by George Leonard or Principles mm -hmm. by Ray Dalio, some mm -hmm. of these books, if you study them and live them, it changes everything. If you read 60 books, yeah, I got ideas here and there, but nothing happens. We're, we're not lacking in ideas. We're lacking in, in execution. In fact, if you, here, here's an interesting little fact for people. You think you have a great idea. You know how much your idea is worth in, in when you look at a business? It's one to 3% of the value of the business. It's all the, all the values in execution. Like execution. I don't have great ideas, but it's like you, you go look at apartments. Yeah, I've got this apartment. I got this idea. Okay, cool. That's worth about five bucks, right. but somebody has got to go do it. And that's, that's where all the value is. The world needs more doers. You want to get rich, go do something. There you go, guys. Well said. Um, okay. One, one last real quick thing, just cause I, I got to geek out on this for a second. What's your, uh, what's your take? I'm going to put you on the spot on, on, uh, crypto Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Crypto is going to, is, is taking over the financial system with decentralized finance. It's it, there's the cats out of the bag. It's a multi-trillion dollar asset class. And it's the reason it's going to win is because it's, it's freedom. And when you, when you think about our monetary system, it's a tyrannical system based on control by oligarchs, people like Jerome mm -hmm. Powell and Mario Draghi in, in the EU. And, and you have all these systems that are fighting for control and they have been. Now they've got the whole planet with people saying, we want freedom. You've got places that, that I used to love, like Australia, that are going into more of a totalitarian dictator state. And it's, it, it's tyranny that's trying to fight and take over. Our monetary system is tyrannical. Crypto is the opposite. So it's liberty versus uh, versus tyranny that you're seeing in these things. There's no way that governments can stop it. What they're going to try to do is tax it or or like in the case of China, they'll make it so dangerous, but that's not going to happen in the US. And is it going to happen around the world? No, people are going to move. They're going to leave. They're going to get up. They're going to use their shoe leather to vote. They're going to move to places where their freedom is more valuable, mm -hmm. where, where governments embrace it. And I don't know, I, Representative Emmer's in Congress just introduced a bill that that would restrict and disallow the, the Federal Reserve from having a, a central bank digital currency. That is awesome. That is not what we were expecting to see. Instead, we were thinking this is going to happen, but Congress may actually push back on the Fed. We'll, we'll see if that, if that happens, but I think there's a lot of enthusiasm for freedom and this whole corrupt system with fiat that the Federal Reserve and these central banks have been responsible for for the last 118 19 years since the 1913 when there is a shift there's a shift towards people actually owning the system and the, the more you go down the rabbit hole you realize wow i get why bitcoin is so valuable i get why this system is so valuable for people it's disastrous for these centralized institutions like banks and insurance companies and accounting it's in they're they're in a lot of trouble because they've been feeding off people for decades and centuries. And this system actually takes all that wealth and puts it back in people's hands. So I think that conservatives and socialists alike can all be in favor of this. The only ones that don't like this are the, are the criminals like Jamie Dimon at Chase. <laughs> Got it. You love Chase Bank, don't you? I can tell. Well, I, you know, there's a reason that I've, I've seen them screw me and other people over so many times. In 2020, they got fined a billion dollars for manipulating the silver market for the last 10 years. They made a billion dollars in 2020 on that one trading desk. So for them, they look at criminal activity as a cost of doing business. So they should all go to jail. They, should, they ought to be hung. Jamie Dimon is a criminal. The guy should be in prison, but yet He's, he's one of the most influential people in the world, and he's a billionaire because of all, the amount of money he's stolen from people like you and me using his bank as a machine. Mm -hmm. So I have a big, I have a, I have a hate relationship with it. I can't stand that. And, I, and it's mm -hmm. not just them. These, you know, when Wells Fargo has done some of this stuff, you know, all the accounts that they opened because they wanted to hit their, their goals. These big banks are, are, they're a leviathan on our system. They're criminal, they're, they're corrupt, they're unjust. They just steal and rape and pillage the population. So I do not mm -hmm. have a, a, a warm fuzzy over them. They're, yeah. we don't need them. We need to get rid of them. And they're, now they're too big to fail. So then we support them with all of our blood, sweat, and tears. I, no. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Do I have, do I not, do I like them? No. Yeah. Got it. Got it. There should be some sort of legal disclaimer inserted here. I don't know what it would be, but um, <laughs> something to, something to uh, disclaim uh, opinion, but uh, I am in no way uh, negating that opinion or contesting it. Um, because you're much smarter about this stuff than I am. So I respect that. And, and uh, you, you know, sometimes it's, it's the truth can be a little shocking to hear, like, you know, stated 
that plainly. And, and cause you're, I mean, what we're used to seeing, we're used to chase field and, and chase arena and the chase halftime super bowl or whatever, and chase this and chase that, like, it's such a huge part of our culture. And I mean, some of these brands are just are, are massive and, and obviously the banks are some of the biggest ones. So um, yeah, I can see that. And everybody oh. should go do their own research. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter what I say, go, go and dig and dig and don't dig into MSNBC. Go. go dig past the MSNBC. If you look at, so here's, here's a little tip and secret. If you're just looking at mainstream, what you're looking at is wall street and pharma infused promotion dollars. So what do you think they're going to say? That's right. Everything right. positive about the banks and pharma. Like yeah. you just have to follow the money, like literally follow the money and you'll learn, Oh, wait, there's five companies that control almost all of the brands in the world. Huh? That's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I just, it's, I think it's really important for people to learn how to think and to actually question things. That's mm -hmm. the biggest problem I have with, with science and, or what we think is science right now with all the stuff that's going on in the world with the COVID and, and all that people just aren't allowed to actually have questions. If they do, they're being suppressed. Mm -hmm. So right now, really good time to find the truth, ask questions, figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, on that, thank you, Damien. This has been very enlightening for me. Um, I have a, a, a totally new appreciation for this opportunity. And I hope that for listeners, I hope you guys are going to go grab a copy of Damien's book, qrpbook.com. Check that out there and uh and reach out to damien and uh i'm sure you're available for people with questions and people that want to get going on this right yeah i'm always, always happy to talk with people uh, i've got a whole I've got, I've got a great team and that's one of the values that you'll find when when you reach out make sure people have teams you, you never want to just work with somebody that's this important where it's just one person that you're reliant you want to make sure that because you know people get hit by trucks stuff happens. You want to make sure there's teams and there's, there's structures that can support you for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, again, thank you for, for all your wisdom and, and, uh, suggestions and, and, uh, coaching here. Uh, it's been, been very enlightening. So listeners hope you got a lot out of this and, uh, and we'll follow up on some action steps. Like Damien said, pick one thing, you know, go get the book. Like, Download that, download the downloadable, and then get, have the book shipped to you. Uh, and just make that your one action step, your one takeaway from this, if, if that's speaking to you. So awesome. Damien, thanks again, brother. Appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Tate. Appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, you bet. Listeners, thanks for listening to another episode of The Apartment Guys, and we'll check you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to The Apartment Guys with Tate Seymour. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.